Now we're turning to the mean value theorem, which is a more general form of the theorem of Hall. So let's go straight to the statement. Now we suppose that f is a function that is continuous on the closed interval a, b and differentiable on the open interval a, b. These two assumptions are just like the first two assumptions in Hall's theorem. But we drop the third assumption, which was that f of a and f of b are equal. So even if we don't have this additional assumption, we still have a similar conclusion, which is that there exists a c in the open interval a, b, where the derivative takes a particular value, which is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Of course, if we add that f of a is equal to f of b, we recover um, the fact that the derivative takes a value 0, and therefore you see that the th theorem of Hall is a particular case of the mean value theorem. But let's try to make sense of this f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So we have this time uh, f of a and f of b may be different, so we have this kind of picture and we join these two points by a function that is continuous on the closed interval differentiable on the open interval, so maybe something like that. So what does that mean, this f of b minus f of a over b minus a? As you can see, this is the average rate of change of the function f over the interval a, b. And therefore, what the theorem says is that under these assumptions, the instantaneous rate of change takes as one of its values the average rate of change. In that sense, it is about the mean value, hence the name of the CRM, the mean value of the rate of change. Geometrically, this average rate of change of the function is the slope of the secant line that joins the points of coordinates a f of a and b f of b. And what the CRM says is that the derivative of the function takes this value. In other words, there are some tangent lines whose slope is the same as the slope of the sequent line. In other words, there are tangent lines to the graph that are parallel to the sequent line. So this is a geometric interpretation of the CRM. Now we already have seen that the CRM of Hall is a particular case of the mean value CRM. In fact, there they really are two uh, two sides of the same coin. So let me try to explain this. Uh, we will see that to prove the general form of the CRM, the mean value CRM, we really use the CRM of Hall, the particular case. They are the same CRM because if you forget about the coordinates and you look at this picture, which represents the mean value CRM, and you turn it, then you really get the picture that corresponds to Hall's CRM. So in other words, to prove mean value theorem, <coughs> we're going to use an auxiliary function which essentially corresponds to turning the picture around, like here, and apply whole theorem to this auxiliary function. And turning back, we'll be interpreting what it means for the original function f. So let's do that. So we need to introduce this auxiliary function, which is going to be um, continuous on the closed interval a, b and differentiable on the open interval a, b whenever the function f is and that will have the additional property that is not shared by f that we have the same values at the endpoints. A simple way to do that geometrically if you look at what happens for a certain x and you look at what is above uh, a certain x in the open interval a, b um, the point above x that is on the graph of f is of course coordinates f of x. And then there is also the point on the secant line that lies above x, and it has y coordinate y equal f of a plus f of b minus f of a over b minus a multiplied by x minus a, simply because the equation of the line is the line of slope f of b minus f of a over b minus a, as we have seen. This is the slope of the secant line. 
and it goes through the point of coordinates a, f of a. So if you write the point slope form of the equation of the line, this is what you get. Now for our auxiliary function, we're going to take h of x, which is f of x minus y. So geometrically, this is this distance in red on the picture. Of course, it's a sine distance. You see that it is positive uh, for the particular value of x that I picked for the picture. But uh, if, you w if x was on the side where the graph of f is below the um, secant line, we would have something negative. Anyhow, we have an explicit expression for h of x, and either geometrically or algebraically, it should be clear that um, the values at the endpoints for this function is going to be zero. Now, the function h is simply the function f of x, to which you add this function, which is simply a linear function. It's a constant plus a constant multiple of x minus a, so this is a linear function. Therefore, that means that if f is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, so is the h. So h is going to satisfy the first two conditions in the theorem of Hall. On the other end, as I mentioned, the values of h at the endpoints are both zero. You can either plug a in the algebraic expression and check that you get zero, and similarly plug b and check that you get zero, or simply look at the picture and see what it means, and you'll see that it is obvious that h takes a value zero at a and b. So the third assumption in the theorem of Hall is also satisfied. That means that this theorem applies to h on the closed interval AB. And the conclusion is that the derivative of h should take the value 0 somewhere on the inter open interval AB. And so we have a place where h prime is 0. Now what does that mean? h of x is f of x minus a constant, whose derivative is 0, minus the slope times x minus a. This slope is, of course, a constant, so when we differentiate h, we get f prime of x minus the derivative of f of a, which is 0, minus the derivative of a constant times x minus a, but the derivative of x minus a is 1. So we get simply f prime of x minus the average rate of change of f over the interval. And that means that the fact that the derivative of h at c is 0 is equivalent to the fact that the derivative of f at c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. In other words, we have proved the mean value theorem. This is a very important theorem because of the many applications. Um, this is a more theoretical result. We will see just some of the applications in this section in the next video, but um, we will also see this theorem used many times in uh, other modules later on. To finish with this video, I want to point out that just like for the particular case of the theorem of Hall, the assumptions are essential. So, for instance, continuity on the closed interval is essential because if I take a function with just one discontinuity, something like that, and you see that for that particular function, the derivative is always zero whenever it is defined, whereas uh, on my picture, the slope of the secant line is not zero. So the conclusion of the mean value theorem fails because we have just one discontinuity in the interval. Similarly, differentiability on the open interval is essential. For instance, we can look at a picture like that, uh, where we have a function that is <coughs> uh, piecewise linear. So the slope of the two pieces is different from the slope of the green light, and therefore the conclusion of the mean value theorem fails. Of course, at the corner point, the function is not differentiable. In the next video, we're going to look at some basic applications.